Hi, I'm Kristen. This is Crafting with Kristen. Today we're going to be doing a painting project. We're going to be making a really cool Metallica wine glass. If you don't drink wine, you can also paint it on a champagne flute, beer glass, soda glass, glass coffee mug, or even like a flower vase if you're special someone uh, it happens to be a big Metallica fan. So all we're going to need for this project is we're going to need whatever type of glass that you want to paint on. You're going to need a little tray to put your paint in. You're also going to need some artist quality paint brushes. I don't recommend getting the craft ones. They don't hold up as well, so get some uh, get some from the art store that are for acrylic paint. And you want something with like a nice fine tip like this because this is going to be a lot better for all the small details we're going to do on this piece. You're also going to need paint that's specific for glass. I highly recommend this Martha Stewart brand one. It's worked really, really well for me. I have tons of glasses that I've painted up myself and I use them to drink my favorite Cabernets and whiskeys out of them all the time. And as you can see, it's held up beautifully through washes and lots of drinking. All right, so let's get everything together, pour yourself something to drink, and let's get crafting. So we're gonna get our glassware all cleaned up. I'm gonna use some rubbing alcohol. This step is optional, but it's especially good if you got glass from a thrift store or something like that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw kind of an egg shape that's sideways, just like that. We're gonna do a little triangle where the nose is gonna be, and we're also going to do a little sideways rectangle, kind of cut off at the same angle. Then we're gonna do sort of a lopsided looking rectangle for the bottom jaw. You can almost imagine a triangle where the two jaw bones meet, you see that? Next we're gonna draw a little backward C and a forward C that's slightly smaller. That's gonna mark where the eye is gonna be and that little concave shape behind the eye on the skull. Now we're gonna fill all this in with white paint and just get a good base going. I'm kind of leaving a mark where the jawbone was meeting the uh, base of the skull because I'm gonna kinda start to build up some shadows there eventually. Now I'm just kind of winging this flame on the bottom. I kind of start by just drawing little lines and squiggling them back to meet the base of the skull. The more random it looks, the better. I kind of follow a pattern where they, right towards the middle, it starts to get longer, if that makes sense. Now I'm gonna fill in some black where the eye is gonna be. And I'm also repeating the same for that little concave shape behind the skull. I'm marking with the black paint where I'm gonna have the jawbone and where I'm gonna have the nose. And I'm slowly starting to mark the little ridges around the sides. Now I'm gonna let the paint dry for a little bit. You wanna make sure to let it dry because if you start just layering paint on top, it's gonna start to scrape it off the glass. I'm building up more of a layer on this white base. This paint is not as opaque as other paints that I've worked with, but it does work really well. So you just have to be patient and build up the layers. I'm gonna take some of my black paint and I mixed up a little bit of a dark gray and I'm starting to outline all the areas where I've marked with black. I'm eventually gonna blend these out, but for right now I'm just kinda marking where the dark areas of this are gonna be. Some of my white paint that I used to make the base is actually blending with it right now too, which is giving me a really good gradient. Now I'm cleaning my brush off, and I'm gonna get a little white paint, and I'm gonna start just kind of blending in to create a lot of gray everywhere. Now you might think that you might want some more of the white paint still there, but we can always bring it back for a nice crisp highlight. So getting majority of the glass kind of gray is ideal. I'm going to let it dry for a little bit and then come back to it. Now I'm getting that white paint to get some crisp highlights. I'm layering down a lot of it around that C shape on the back of the skull and tracing along the jawbone. I'm also going to paint a little bit of it behind the eye, 
but not all the way down. Now I'm gonna blend it with some gray. Get a real nice gradient here. I'm gonna bring back some of the darks in just a moment. Starting to bring the white into that jawbone. You want to keep the little squiggly area directly under the eye nice and dark, but kind of the area where it meets the nose, you want it a little bit lighter. Now I'm tracing with the black along that C shape for the base of the skull and along the eye. I'm also giving slight little gray strokes around the eye. And I'm starting to build up that jawbone area, building up a lot of that gray. And then we can bring highlights and little black lines along as we finish it. It's important to remember that you're not gonna get a perfect blend on everything, but you want just kind of a nice, decent little gradient. Especially if this is your first painting project, you're not gonna have a masterpiece right off the bat. Just be proud of actually making something yourself and doing something unique and cool with your free time. This is also a very graphic sort of a piece, so once we start to add the black lines into it, you're really gonna start to not notice all the imperfections with your blending. I'm bringing back a lot of the white around the edges of the eye. I'm also bringing some of this white around the jawbone and outlining the nose. Now I'm starting to mark where the little teeth are. You're kind of just doing little dots that get progressively smaller as they reach the jawbone. Now I'm gonna build up some more of that white along the flames that we're doing on the back of the skull. Now that I've got a good white base, I'm getting a little bit of black paint and I'm starting to do some of those outlines like I was talking about. All the marks that you need are already there, so you're kind of just following a guideline. Now that I've let that dry for a little bit, I'm gonna throw down some more layers. I'm building up a nice white reflective line on the back of the skull. It really gives it a sense of depth. And I'm building up the white along the teeth and along the flames on the back of the skull. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush off. It's important to rinse your brush a lot throughout the process and have a washcloth handy to dry it off. Now I've got some of that black paint and I'm starting to outline the little eye socket. You kind of want to trace around the back of it, but you don't want the entire thing to be blacked out. You want to leave a little gray towards the base of it. It gives it a sense of depth like the light is hitting the inside of it. I'm also tracing around the back of the concave side of the skull. In my reference photo, there's lots of little cracks, so I'm just kind of randomly doing little fine lines of cracks. I'm also drawing little lines around the edge of the skull and along the eye socket. And now I'm just tracing that little shape of the nose and the jawbone that I've marked earlier. Skulls are a lot of uh, forward and backward C shapes and U shapes all throughout. So kind of figuring out where those are in your reference photo is gonna be really helpful. When I'm outlining the teeth, I'm actually doing little C and U shapes along the top of the bottom and then just connecting them with little straight lines in between. They're kind of like little tic-tac shapes. Now I'm repeating that same process to draw the little teeth on the bottom. And the teeth on the bottom of this skull, the very last incisor is dramatically bigger than all the other ones. So that's just a little something to keep in mind while you're drawing this out. 
also randomly put like a little tiny stroke or two of uh, black paint on a couple teeth. Kind of gives them a raw, rugged sort of look and gives them a lot of depth. Now I'm going to start outlining the base of the skull. So I'm tracing this little line and then I'm going to want to do the first row of flames. So I'm kind of tracing where I want that now. The reason why I still kept the C shape for the back of the skull is just so I knew where to shade everything else. I'm eventually going to add some white paint down to completely erase that line, but it gives you a sense of the anatomy of the skull, and it's going to make it look a lot more realistic. Flames can be relatively easy to paint as long as you make them sort of random looking, but still follow some sort of a structure. The way that I do that with this is I know where my high point is and they're all gonna be progressively getting longer, tapering off to that one high point, but the direction that I'm making the flames curve is all gonna be a little bit different. That's gonna give you the most believable sort of graphic flames. Now I'm rinsing my brush off and I'm getting a little white paint and I'm gonna erase by painting over with white paint the outline that I had for the base of the skull. So I'm just filling in that gray area with some white. And now I got my black paint again and I'm just giving a little bit of depth behind it. I'm making a nice black layer and then I'm gonna take a little white paint and just kind of blend it in. We're just gonna have a nice bit of transitional gray and only keep the white on the very tips of the flames on the back side of the skull. More white. Now we're ready to paint some more. So now I'm just kind of crisping up a lot of those lines that I did for the flames. Now that we've crisped up the lines for the flames, now we're going to start adding the Metallica logo. It's basically just regular block letters, but you have this really dramatic uh, side to the A and the M, where it just really tapers off very long on the bottom half of it, and then you do kind of a little lightning bolt shape on the bottom. I highly recommend using a reference photo to do this and then blocking it in with the white first and then we're going to outline it in black. Like I said before too, if it's in an area of the wine glass where it's easy to fix, you can use the rubbing alcohol to remove it, but if it's the part on the skull where you've messed up the logo, you're going to have kind of a rough time because if you try to remove it with the rubbing alcohol, you're going to take off a lot of the skull. You're also going to get kind of clumpy areas that are going to be hard to repaint over. Now that I've put down the white base and I'm happy with it, I'm just taking a fine tipped brush that I've been using this whole time and I'm outlining it with black. The best way to get fine lines is to only put a little bit of paint on your brush and then very slowly and with control, make sure to trace your lines. And then if you wind up getting a bunch of paint kind of clumped up on your brush, just go ahead and rinse it with water and then dry it off with a washcloth next to you. Now we're just gonna clean those lines up just a little bit more and really make them bold and make them stand out. Taking a little bit more black paint now that they've dried for a little bit and we're just continuing to outline all the lettering. I'm also going through and taking some white paint and just getting a few more crisp highlights. Now we're gonna take a cool oven. You do not wanna preheat it beforehand and you want to load your glassware that you painted into the oven. It's important to keep the oven cool because if you put them into a hot oven and your glassware is cool, it's going to crack and ruin your project. Then all that work painting is going to be sad. Turn your oven up to 350. 
and set a timer for 30 minutes. It's important to also make sure that your paint is completely dry before you start to bake it. All right, and now that we've baked it for 30 minutes, we can leave the oven open and let it cool off and then safely remove our glassware. If you're not certain if your glassware is cooled, you can use an oven mitt to remove it and then place it on top of a piece of fabric so that way you're not putting it directly on a cool surface. Cheers! I hope that you had fun making this project with me. If you like the way that your project turned out, make sure to tag me in social media so I can see what we created together. If there's projects that you want to work on in the future, leave a comment below so I know what to do for my next video. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for crafting with me.